I, I'm just so fascinated by the creativity that, that you've always presented and the multi you know, sides of you. There, there's just something so special about how you present yourself to the world. And I would really love to know um, what are some of the things that nurture that creative being in you and, and how that can translate if you were ever to give advice to others that um, want to just follow their, their own special whoever they are in life, personally. Well, I, 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 there's a few things. I would say to you know, young people starting in music, you know, you've got to decide what it is you want to do. If you want to be an MTV clone, you know, just mm -hmm. something that's just a, another... If, if you want to be a star, you, know, you want to ride around in limos and wear dark yeah. glasses on rainy days, well, then watch MTV, copy what they do. Right. You might get lucky. There's about a 1.5% chance you'd ever make a living out of mm -hmm. it. But you know, if that's what you want to do, go for it. Because there is a, a very... Um, uh, stereotypical way of doing things and, and by and large if you follow what you see on MTV and you want to be that kind of person doing that kind of music well there's your example but if you want to do something that's a little more creative or original then you know my advice would be learn to play an instrument properly mm -hmm. you know or, or learn to sing properly and some you know take some advice take some singing lessons you know tr work in different styles find out where your your particular um, the physicality of who you are and, the, and what you're capable of, what is most suited for. Not everybody can sing opera, not everybody can sing rock and roll or do rap. You know, mm -hmm. find out what suits you, try different things. But whatever it is, practice, do it. Sure. You know, if you, if you, I did my practicing, I was very lucky. I took up the flute at the age of 20 and um, you know, within, within a couple of days of getting one or two notes out of it, I was playing it on stage. So mm -hmm. I did my learning and practicing as a performing musician, but the, 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 you know, if you're going to learn to play, you've got to actually do it every mm -hmm. day. You can't just be a dilettante and sort of you know, pretend to do it once mm -hmm. in a while. You've actually got to really put in the hours. And you put in the hours by practicing, or in my case, writing music and playing it live on stage, mm -hmm. or you sit in your room and you play for three, four, five hours a day, and you learn to play something mm -hmm. properly to, to, to develop the skills and develop the creativity, whether it's strumming a guitar rather well, um, or playing an orchestral instrument, whatever it is, it requires discipline, it requires you know, some, some approach. And if you don't want to do that, well, just do it as a hobby and have yeah. fun. But if you want to be a professional musician, you have to put in the hours. And, um, and also, you know, I don't think you need to be obsessed about having hits, which is the other thing. You, know, you should write music because, mm -hmm. because it's, it, it expresses something to you and it does so in a way that, that first of all, captivates you and hopefully people around you and ultimately a larger audience. If you, if you constantly dream in a world of three and a half minute quickies, mm -hmm. you know, then it's, um, it's, there's, there's more to it than that. You know, it doesn't all have to be compartmentalized into sort of intro, verse, chorus, verse, mm -hmm. chorus, you know, middle eight, verse, chorus, chorus or whatever. It, you know, you can be more adventurous. It doesn't have to be a three and a half minute kind of format that sure. is going to get radio play. You know, think, let the music dictate what it wants to be. Let it, let it become its, its own destiny, yeah. you know, as a piece of music. Don't, don't constrain it by ideas of commercial um, demands that you perceive are there from record companies and, and publishers and producers and agents and managers. If, if that's all you give them, that's all they want. Mm -hmm. Show them something different, maybe you'll get their attention. Mm -hmm. um, just as people like Jimi Hendrix did mm -hmm. back in the, in the mid-60s. You know, it was coming along with something different that got people's attention, not mm -hmm. by sounding exactly the same as everybody else. So, you know, those, those are a couple of pearls of rather obvious wisdom, but, you know, nonetheless, don't, don't, don't just be constrained by what you see as having success. You know, let's try and find something different to mm -hmm. do. Let's, let's find another way to, uh, to approach the, the idea of, um, of love and life and death and whatever it is you want to sing about. Sure, and you if you're know. one of those people who wears heart on sleeve and sings I, me, uh, lyrics, you know, Alanis Morissette, sort mm -hmm. of clone number 10. <laughs> well, great, that's fine, but there are other things to write about as well. And I'm more of a portrait painter. I, I, oh, I, yeah. I paint people in landscapes because having trained originally as a painter, artist, as an artist, yeah. I mean, that's the way I think. I'm much more visual. So I tend to, most of my songs are kind of more about people and not just close-ups. They're not mm -hmm. just, they're, they're people, but in a context, in some, some setting. That's what I think I do most often and what I'm pretty sure I do best. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, there are all sorts of things you can write about. You don't have to necessarily, they don't have to be boy-girl relationship sure. songs. 
you know, or, or girl, girl, or boy, boy, or boy, Doberman, <laughs> uh, you know, or, I mean, yeah, I mean, animals, you write plants, a lot about animals, nature, yeah. those, those things come into mm -hmm. my song sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Like on Rupee's Dance, which I love this CD, and there are a couple about your own cats and pigeons and, you Yeah, know, well, you know, there's a couple about my own cats, but the, the, you know, it all sounds a little bit too, too Paul McCartney, doesn't too wet, too sort of, you know, to uh, oh. ooze, oozy sentimentality, but I'm singing here about the death of a cat. Yeah, oh, I know. And, it's and I, I wrote the song. I wrote the song in the cat. hour after the needle went. So I had tears in my eyes not only when I wrote the song, when I recorded it, but when I played it on stage. It's, it's for me. It's, a, it's a, like a tribute. Um, you know, for me, the, the, the reality is a pet owner. If right. we can call us pet owners, do we own our animals? I don't think we pay for them. We pay, pay through the nose for right. them, but we don't necessarily own them.